morning everyone and welcome to Fort Watonga, Sycamore Shoals in Elizabethton, Tennessee. Being here ready for divine service this morning. You can see that we have a lovely day. We've got a nice crowd. <laughs> you probably see faces that you know. starting here in just a moment. That's a long way back for that back row. That's even further back for that back row. <laughs> Good Sunday morning, everyone. Colonel, are you ready for me to start? I'm ready, sir. All right. Well, you're second in command right now, so I, <laughs> I thought I'd wait on you. It is an honor to be here. And uh, if anyone needs a, needs a pamphlet, the uh, young lady back in the back, Isabella, has some, has some pamphlets there. But otherwise, let's, uh, let's prepare ourselves for worship. Uh, as, as I am wont to do, I begin with a song. And I've chosen this week Psalm 46. My sermon this week is, is appended to the sermon from last week. And I know maybe a couple of you might have been, might have been at Joseph Martin, his station, and, uh, and heard that one, which was appended to the one a fortnight earlier at, the, at Natural Tunnel, uh, dealing with the, with the little book in the New Testament called Hebrews. Hebrews. And I'm going to have a few things to say about that, so we're not going to sing this morning. If, if that's, is that all right? Unless somebody's bursting with a song right now. Uh, all right. Let's begin. Psalm 46, which is a natural uh, following of, of, of the theme and the words of Psalm 42 that I read last week. Here are the words of, of, of the psalmist. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There's a little word inserted into the text right here that I should have said something about before, that Selah, which we don't know exactly what that means. But many are, are thinking that is, is a perhaps a musical term, or it could be a word of emphasis. Uh, perhaps it and, and, and amen coming from the coming from the congregation. So let me read that first phrase, that first paragraph yet again. Uh, for these words are these words are sweet. And when we get to that, uh, a hearty amen coming from the congregation. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Amen. Amen. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. 
He burns the chariots with fire. And he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the, in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, as we come together this Sunday morning to join our hearts and our minds in, in praise and worship to you, in a time of, of learning more about you. Uh, Father, this is our desire to know as, as much as we can about our God, about our Savior, about our salvation, about the victory that we have been afforded, about the place that has been prepared for us. So at this time, I, I, I ask that you, that you help us turn our minds and hearts towards you that you bless the words that are said, the words that are heard, and, and we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That little book of Hebrews in the New Testament only takes 45 minutes for you to read all the way through, or about 30 services to preach all the way through. And I'm, and I'm, I'm rounding, I'm rounding the, 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 the last few corners here. I found myself at the end of the 12th chapter of Hebrews, just, just merely, merely 13, 13 chapters. Who, who here has, has, has listened to any of those sermons? Anybody? A, a, few, a few of you? Okay, okay, so I feel fairly safe because I'm going to have to repeat just a couple of things to, 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 set, to set a context. So you can nap just for about three minutes, all right. But the book of Hebrews is a sermon. It is, uh, in, in my mind, it is, it is important for us that, that love history because as I have uh, spent a lot of time contemplating uh, this, th this wonderful revelation given to us, this Word of God, that, that, that I've often wondered, what did it sound like? What did it sound like? Now, I understand, I know just a little bit of Greek, I know very less Hebrew, but, but, but I, I, what did the words, how did the words ring to the people that heard a sermon in 62 AD. Well, you read the book of Hebrews out loud, and yes, it's going to be in English instead of in Greek, but you're going to hear what a pastor said to his congregation. Now, he was not present with them at the time that he delivered this sermon, much as many of you here know that, that, that when, when we're between appointments, perhaps the minister hasn't arrived at the, at the muster, and you may get up and and read a sermon that has been published by, by John Newton or George Whitfield or John Wesley or some, some other noted, noted minister. So at one point, there was someone that stood in front of that congregation and, and, and read. Well, what impact did it have? Did reading a sermon written by someone miles away have any impact there in Rome? Because that's where the people that heard it the first time lived, in or around Rome. They were a home church, so it would have been a small congregation. They would have already suffered an expulsion from Rome in 49 with the Emperor Claudius. They would be in the, the midst of, of Emperor Nero at this point and blaming the Christians for a fire and all of, all of that, that type of thing. So they are no strangers to, to controversy. They're no strangers to, uh, to, to the difficulties of, of, of life. And, 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 and we, we, can, we, can look, we can look at history. And, I, and, I, and I'll tell you that, that, that there was a profound impact from the book of Hebrews. And we know this because in 95, a man by the name of Clement wrote First Clement. And one of the chapters in there, about in the 30s somewhere, he said, or he quotes the ideas out of Hebrews chapter 1. The things that, that we know that, that in times past God spoke through the prophets, but in these present days He has spoken to us through His Son, who is the exact image of the invisible God. All these things He's been, he's been, been teaching, and He says that, that, they, that, that they listened to that. But much like our churches nowadays, here in the 1770s, we, uh, we come to church on Sunday morning, and then we... Then we head to our fields on Monday and, and things become difficult. 
things become difficult. The crops don't, don't come up. The, the, this problem happens, that problem happens, sickness, illness. And, and, we, and we, we walk away from the Word of God. Well, we know that through history that the book of Hebrews was basically put to rest between Clement and about the 4th or 5th century. And we see a revival of that at that point. What's the book of Hebrews about? The book of Hebrews is telling us in a historic context who Jesus Christ is. It is taking the things that, that we would have known, even we Gentiles would have known. We would have known and, and known from our, our Jewish counterparts, our Jewish friends, that there were sacrifices made. A lot of sacrifices. They were, they were very particular in, in, in the way that they were done. And they were done so that we could see what the coming Messiah was going to, to, to be like and, and what his character would be and what he was going to be, to be teaching us. So the book of Hebrews is explaining our Christianity in our historic context. It, it is telling us that, that Moses or Abraham, it gives a lot about Abraham. Next week I get to mention Abraham again. But, but it, it tells us a lot about what, what that meant when, when Abraham did what he did. It tells us what it meant when Moses did what he did. It tells us what it meant when the high priest took the blood of the sacrifice and he would go into the part of the temple that you only went into one time a year and only the high priest could go in and only after he was cleansed and made perfect through that cleansing could he enter into the Holy of Holies. If the book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus Christ is our high priest. He is the one that has gone into the Holy of Holies, not the one on earth made by hands, but the one in heaven that this one down here represents. And he has taken not the blood of bulls and goats and lambs, but he has taken his own blood into that. And in that, 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 one, that one statement about chapter 8, chapter 9, it tells us where was Jesus between his crucifixion and his resurrection. He was appearing before the Father with his own sacrifice made, made, made for, for our sins. And, and, and this, is, this is significant. It, it, uh, it should inspire us. And it hopefully inspire, inspired those there in Rome, there in that house church, to respond in a positive way. Well, I can't go and preach all 38 sermons right now. Boy, I'd love to. Beautiful day, nice and cool breeze. But, but no, I can't, I can't do that. I have, to, I have to get to Hebrews 12, verses 18 through, uh, through 29. But the thing I'll, the, a couple of things I want you to remember out of the book of Hebrews is it is telling us through our own past what to expect here in our present. It's telling us through those sacrifices and ceremonies what to expect in the church of Jesus Christ. And it's giving us theology. Anybody love theology as much as I do? Oh, yeah. Boy, howdy. Let's, let's dig into this. But uh, Now, that's another 38 sermons. But through all of that, it is, it is telling us hard things. It's telling us, it's telling us glorious things. So it's telling us history. It's telling us who Jesus Christ is. It's telling us a third thing that we can all relate to. For it's telling us that we're pilgrims. We're pilgrims bound for another land. This, a few of you here can call, can call this fort home. But the rest of us are, are traveling through. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a home yet. And we're hoping one day to arrive at that place that we will build and, and, and call our home. And that's what... That's what the writer to Hebrews wants us to know, that we are not, we're not in, in that place now. But as we come to Hebrews chapter 12, what's the most famous chapter in Hebrews? 11. What is Hebrews 11 called? The Hall of Faith. And Abraham did, and Moses did, and all of these, and it gets down... 
partway through, and the reason we know this is a sermon, this is kind of an aside, but the rabbit's sitting still and I can get him, <laughs> is, is, that, is that you get halfway through chapter 11 and it says, I don't have time to go into all this detail. Time would prevent, prevent me from telling you about, about Gideon and David and all these other people that he's, that he's, that he's, that he's going to mention. But it is, it is there so that we can understand. Chapter 12 starts with therefore. Therefore starts an application. You go to school, right? You learn the trade that you're going to do. And therefore, one day, the master hands you the tool and says, do it. Well, here's our application. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us, let us throw off the weight that hinders every weight and run the race set before us. Hebrews 18, Hebrews 12, 18, it says, For you have not come to what may be touched. Think of, think of a pilgrim here. You have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire, darkness, and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them. I want you to hear the, the, the anger, or the, not the anger, the fear. That this, that this is going, to, is going to inspire. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. Now, this is a wonderful, a wonderful picture uh, in my mind. I hope I can paint this picture, picture for you. Again, we're, we're traveling. We're hopefully going to our, to our destination. But this is not our destination. The mountain there in Sinai was not their destination. The law that was given was not even their destination. It was a, a teaching. It was a, a showing us of, what, of what, was, what was to come. So, so we have this very, very negative statement. I mean, we're afraid of the natives. We're afraid to walk outside these, these gates sometimes. We don't know what's out there. Or what might not be out there. So, so we, we approach this with, with fear. Add to that you hear a trembling voice. Add to that you just hear the thunder that we had a few nights ago. That's enough to frighten you, isn't it? But this is, this is the picture that we have. But verse 22 it says, But you have come to Mount Zion. You have come to a destination. You have come to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. So innum uh, and, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are er enrolled in heaven. Oh, there's a sermon in that one. Where are our loved ones today? Are they in that great cloud of witnesses looking down upon us? No. They're looking towards the throne. They are gathered in this, in this perfect place. They are the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. And to, we look to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. There's our friends. There's our friends. They have attained that, that, that city. In verse 24, and we look to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to, be sprink, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of of Abel. The blood of Abel, Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve's first, the first murder, his blood, his blood speaks, but Christ's blood speaks more. It speaks perfectly. It speaks beautifully. And this is, this is what, what, we have, what we have come to. So we are, not, we are not destined to suffer here. We are going to suffer here. But we are destined for a perfect place, a place that will be home. So when he says that the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel, he says, see that you do not refuse him who is speaking. Go back to chapter 2 of Hebrews, where it says, after it describes our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it describes the sacrifice that he made for our sins, and then it says, how can we... How can we be saved if we refuse? That's, that's my paraphrase of that. 
How can, how, can, how can we do what's right if we refuse to hear the words that have, that have given to us? And here at the end of the chapter, in the application, he's saying, don't refuse. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will he escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. Moses, Joshua. Name one of the leaders of, of Israel that said, do this and live. What did we do? We did the opposite thing. And we were punished. We didn't obey the words that came from here. And will we then obey the words that came from heaven? The writer here is hoping. He's hoping that his congregation, and I'm hoping that my congregation will say, there's more to this faith than just showing up on Sunday morning. There's more to this faith than, than giving an offering and singing a song and all of this. This is our very life. This is our very destination. At that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, love this, <clears throat> therefore, anytime you got a therefore, you look before it and after it, you look before it to see why the there is for, and you look after it and get the message. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Now this, 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 is, this is, is added in there. This is not to be taken lightly. Again, this is not to be, I came to church, I sat here, and I stayed awake for most of the sermon. This is your very eternity that is on the line. This is what the pastor, we don't know who wrote that book. I, I, we call him Bob. We don't know, but, but, but this is what, what the pastor wanted his congregation to hear. And I think, this is my opinion for what it's worth, this is why this book is so sorely ignored. Because it is calling us to a response. It says, how can we escape if we reject such a great salvation? How can we... Uh, if we refuse to hear his speaking, book ends one end of the book, the other end of the book. It is requiring us to make a decision. It is telling us what is comprised in that decision. That is our Savior, Jesus Christ, and his perfect life and his death upon the cross. Now, my friends, I, 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 I don't know which ones of us will not be here next year. I don't know which ones of us will not be anywhere tomorrow. So there is an urgency in my heart. Because as I, as I see faces that I know and that I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, will, 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 will yours be the name that's mentioned next year? And more than that, that's not just a flippant, well, he's gone, bless him, whatever. Where will you be? Where will you be? My favorite 18th century minister, Mr. Whitfield, wanted to get across to his congregation the idea of eternity. So he said, the globe is a big rock. The earth is a big rock, which it kind of is. And one day a year, this tiny little bird flies from wherever it is, and he comes and lands upon the earth and picks up one little pebble in his beak and flies away. When the earth is gone, eternity has not begun. These 69 years. Yeah. Wow, that, what, how did that happen? It seems like incredibly fast. But this isn't even a dent in, 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 in eternity. Do you understand? Do you understand that your very salvation depends upon your faith? Chapter 13, which will be, will be next week, will, 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 will give us 
further instruction on how we behave based on the first 12 chapters. What do we do? What does our faith look like? And read, read the book. Read the book. <coughs> well, the, the Hebrews, but you know the rest of it too is, 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 is good. You read 45 minutes a day, you can read the whole thing in 90 days. You all read books that are bigger than that, I know. Even some that haven't been written yet. But here's the thing. Put your faith and trust in the one who has sacrificed himself for our sin. Put your faith and trust in the one who has sacrificed himself for our sin. Heavenly Father, we come to you at the end of this service, thanking you again for, for, for your blessing, for your, 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 your mercy shown to us. Thanking you again that, that you have, have put all of this history together so that we can know. You have shown us through this history what is, what is coming. And may we, may we apply that on many levels, but may we apply that to our, to our lives and to our eternity. And may we see your Son, our Savior, dying upon the cross. May we see his blood being spilt. May we see him entering into your presence with the sacrifice of his own blood. And may we see him coming out of that tomb on the third day as, as an assurance that you have accepted the sacrifice made for us. May we see these things and may our hearts understand. Heavenly Father, speak to us all individually. Speak to each one is my prayer. And I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I would like, as a benediction, for us to, uh, to sing that doxology, the old hundred, or at least the last of the 15 verses. Would you stand with me? Hopefully you know that. I haven't printed it in your pamphlet. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Put your faith in the one that was sacrificed for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You be dismissed.